Hi boys and girls, before we left school, before spring break, third, fourth, and fifth graders were working on a poetry contest. And I hope all of you have tried to write a poem. You don't know what you can do until you try. So I wanted to read you a few. If you write your poem and send it to me, I, I still have my folders all up there in my bag, hoping that they get to go back to school. But I wanted to read you a poem about a little boy that would never shut the door. Now, when your mother calls you by all of your names, what's that usually mean? You're in trouble, aren't they? Well, he had a first name, two middle names, and his last name. His name is Godfrey Gordon Gustavius Gore. <clears throat> Godfrey Gordon Gustavius Gore, no doubt you have heard the name before, was a boy who never would shut the door. The wind might whistle, the wind might roar, and teeth be aching and throats be sore, but still he never would shut the door. His father would beg, his mother implore, Godfrey Gordon Gustavius Gore, we really do wish you would shut the door. Their hands they wrung, their hair they tore, but Godfrey Gordon Gustavius Gore was deaf as the boy out at the norm. When he walked, walked forth, the folks would roar, Gordon, Godfrey Gordon Gustavius Gore, why don't you shut the door? They rigged a shutter with sail and oar and threatened to pack him off to Singapore. But he begged for mercy and said, No more! Pray do not send me to Singapore on a shutter, and then I will shut the door. You will, said his parents. Keep them on shore, but mind you do, for the plague is sore of a fellow that never will shut the door. Godfrey Gordon Gustavius Gore. So he didn't want to go to Singapore, so he promised he would shut the door. My daddy used to say, shut that door. Were, were you born in a barn? So we've all had trouble shutting the door. Well, if we read a, a boy one, boys, don't you think we should read a girl one? This little girl would shut the door, but she would slam the door, and usually to make her Uncle Jacob start. In other words, to scare Uncle Jacob. This is called Rebecca. A trick that everyone abhors in little girls is slamming doors. A wealthy banker's little daughter who lived in the palace green, Bayswater, by name Rebecca Ovendor was given to this furious sport. She would go, deliberately go, and slam the door like Billy Ho to make her Uncle Jacob start. She was not really bad at heart, but only rather rude and wild. She was an aggravating child. It happened that a marble bust of Abraham was standing just above the door this little lamb had carefully prepared to slam. And down it came, it knocked her flat. It laid her out, she looked like that. Her funeral sermon, which was long and followed by a sacred song, mentioned her virtues, it is true, but dwelt upon her vices too, and showed the dreadful end of one who goes and slams the door for fun. The children who were brought to hear this awful tale from far and near were much impressed and inward, inly swore they never more would shut the door as often they had done before. A bust is like a head of some somebody, like a president or something. And this is a bust of Abraham. So I don't know if it was Abraham Lincoln or Abraham in the Bible, but a bust would usually be made out of marble, and they're usually very heavy. So as she slammed the door, the bust of Abraham fell and fell on her. So don't shut the door. Shut the door, but don't slam the door. <clears throat> now here's a good one for us because we're at home.
I don't know about your family, but it seems like Mr. Claire and I, we finish one meal, and then we say, well, what are we going to have for supper? Uh, you know what? We're just getting up from the table for lunch, so we're enjoying eating. I live across the street from Strax, which is good. Here's some table rules for those of us that have forgotten. Table rules for little folks. In silence, I must take my seat and give God thanks before I eat. Must for my food and patience wait till I am asked to hand my plate. I must not scold, nor whine, nor pout, nor move my chair, nor plate about. With knife or fork or napkin ring, I must not play, nor must I sing. I must not speak a useless word, for children should be seen and not heard. I must not talk about my food, nor fret if I don't think it's good. I must not say, the bread is old, the tea is hot, the coffee's cold. <clears throat> With food... My, with mouth, my food, I must not crowd, nor while I'm eating, speak aloud. Must turn my head to cough or sneeze, and when I ask, say, if you please. The tablecloth I must not spoil, nor with my, fing my food, my fingers soil. I must keep my seat when I am done, nor run around the table sport or run. When told to rise, then I must put my chair away with noiseless foot and lift my heart to God above in praise for his wondrous love. My grandma always used to say, children are supposed to be seen and not heard because usually we kids were too noisy. Remember Patch the Pirate's cute little song, Remember Your Manners, because it is right. Uh, and I need to remember my manners, don't I? Don't talk with food in your mouth. Have pleasant table talk. Don't be picking at each other. Thank Mother for the food she sent be set before you. If you don't like it, take a little. Everybody's supposed to eat some of what is set before them. Don't take more than you can eat. Don't. We don't want to waste food. We don't know when they're going to say, okay, no, you can't go to the grocery store for a few more days. Uh, and do not eat before prayer is said. And keep your elbows off the table. So remember your manners today. I love you. Bye.